Lego Star Wars special. Glad I watched that last year. Yeah. Yeah, so it's good that you've seen it before. This was my first time watching it. Which, okay. before we get to in, Amanda, what was the synopsis? So, Ray is having trouble teaching Finn the ways of the Force, while the rest of the prequel crew plans for a big Life Day celebration on the Falcon. Ray and BB-8 find a special key that allows them to travel through time and see different masters and apprentices throughout Star Wars history to find what she's missing to make Finn a successful Jedi. There are lots of jokes and references as different characters from timelines interact with each other, while Ray has to work to put everything back to normal. And what an enjoyable one it was. It really was a was lot special. of fun. I mean, I think we all have to address the elephant in the room, which is we have not yet reviewed the original holiday special. Yeah. I think it's a it's good that we're jumping off here. Maybe we can make a larger event of the original holiday special after I think so. we gain a bit of a bit of a larger following. Yeah. But I already know that this one's better because it has shirtless Kylo Ren in it. <laughs> They, and I loved that scene too. They drew <laughs> it was done well. I just love how awkward it is for what's his face, Hux. Yeah, yeah. yeah Hux is blushing. Very He's awkward. Like, wow, I am not ready to face this about myself yet. <laughs> he was you know, something. He was something. He was not ready to face Kylo in that moment, and or face his I get chest, it. his navel, <laughs> midriff, everything. <laughs> loved it. Uh, Obi Wan Kenobi moments were all great. Yeah. You know, one of the first things I picked up on that I really enjoyed was how great the voice actors were. Yeah. Especially yeah. that like original prequel crew. They all sound like the real characters. They do. And I noticed it was cool. They brought in Billy D. Williams for Lando. They brought in uh, Rose Tico for Kelly Marie or Chan. Kelly Marie Chan. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and like that was it was oh. really cool to just hear yeah, even those familiar it's voices. It's crazy too. that Harrison Ford reprised his role for it too. Uh, no. 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 <laughs> for thirty six million dollars. There was no was no yeah, there was a Han reference. He was like uh, yeah, they had like the uh, young you Han, old first? Han, yeah. After you. And yeah, Greedo's like solos. <laughs> Pow. <laughs> oh, this was this nailed comedy really well. I thought it was just fun. It plays off of your knowledge of Star Wars. And even if you, you're you not like, yeah, I watched it with my son. He loved it. He wanted to watch it the next night again. It was just real fun. Kids love it. Adults love it. Comedy really well. I think my the one that got me, the one that got me to laugh out loud was when, yeah, Obi-Wan and Anakin are fighting on Mustafar. And he's like, careful, Anakin. You know, th- this is hate. And you know what hate is? He's like, I know what hate leads to. <laughs> <laughs> That was awesome. My uh, my favorite <laughs> line was when um, Obi Wan and Qui Gon are sitting together, and Obi Wan's like, "Bored, bored, bored, bored. <laughs> yeah. Who cares about a trade dispute?" Because that is literally my opinion of the Phantom Menace, <laughs> encapsulated in one quote. It nailed it. Yeah, in that one, it had a very good pulse. I mean, that's that's the case with a lot of Lego things, though. I'm not sure yeah. if you've seen the Lego movies <clears throat> or Lego Batman or played any of the video games, but they do have a really great like pulse on comedy that is entertaining for adults and children. Yeah, they blend reality with fantasy very well. Yeah, but I will say, like, even in it was hard to objectively rank this. But mm, yeah. looking at it, I would say the lowest scoring category for me was the technical aspects. Just not that they were terrible, but I was constantly thinking about or kind of comparing it to other Lego, like the Lego movie or Lego Batman. Mm-hmm. And I think it does Lego on screen really well, especially with that stop motion. Whereas I don't think that's like the focus of this animation. The focus is more of like the story, the the lore and the comedy behind it. Yeah. But it was, uh, yeah, it was just something where it was like, you know, it's 2020. I mean, I think we could we could go all out still on the animation style of it, too. Yeah. I think this was my favorite Lego movie I've ever seen. Really? Yeah. Have you seen a lot of Lego movies? I saw the Lego movie, and that was trash. What? I, saw, oh, the, I wouldn't say trash. It was horrible. I mean, really. I thought we were talking about Avatar. For I think second. almost any, yeah. I think almost <laughs> anything Chris Pratt is a lead in is pretty much garbage for me. Whoa. Yeah, we're not even in the hot takes segment. Just either. send him some no. hate mail, man. I mean, look, he's a 
fine enough guy in I Parks think, and Rec, which is a great I show. I think the Lego movie is Chris Pratt at his best. Yeah, I thought they utilized him yeah, very well. That's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> but you but you I said agree. the Lego movie was trash. Yes. Yeah. And Chris it's Pratt still is the best he's ever been. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh look, the Lego Batman movie I thought was fine. Fine? Fine. Fine. Will I think you're is insane. a comedy genius. Yeah, I Whoa. think you're absolutely insane. Whoa. I think those are really? I think both of those movies are funnier than this one. Agreed. And I'm a hardcore Star Wars fan, you might not know. Really? But I also think just to the technical aspects, you know, like those went all out and those are full feature length. This was what, 45 minutes? Yeah. yeah. Maybe that's why I liked it more. It was short. Yeah. I don't Maybe know. That's I mean, also why we both hated the new Avatar because it was the opposite of short. Yeah, that that new Avatar movie that was something. Look, I, I, I didn't see it. I, the technical aspects were amazing. You got to give those a five out of five. Were they? No, I don't think so. I heard they weren't that amazing, man. I thought they were great. Not for what they compare hyped it up. to its original and like the context and the time. Like what, sixteen years later? I'm just, we're two did it really in. push the boundaries? I'm just saying we're two movies in. I'm still waiting. Two on Two movies story. in. What I know, are we right? gonna get? And then seven. They leave it. Spoiler <laughs> alert! They leave it open for another one where the plot seems like it's gonna be the exact same thing, but in a different biome. Here's that what you do. Pretty much what this one was. Here's yeah. what you do. You abandon that project and you turn it into. You just make a Lego avatar and you might revive that okay. franchise. Okay. Now we're talking. All right. Now we're talking. I will watch that. Legos, man. I do love that. <laughs> Dumb down the special effects. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Speaking of special effects, I love how in this Lego Star Wars film, I'm just gonna. Take I'm gonna Christmas trust today. you with these <laughs> transitions. Keep, keep running with it. You're doing well. Listen, all I'm saying is this one. I thought it did a great job. I enjoyed it. Like, like yeah. I think. Look for what it is. I mean, I, I didn't give them a great score. Maybe like, uh, let's see. Okay, no, I, I kind of railed it. Two point eight. <laughs> so look, I enjoyed that. It wasn't anything <laughs> super special, but it was fun yeah. all around. Yeah. I will say the story is a three out of five. Characters three point three. Technical aspects two point eight. Music three point seven. But for me, and this is where I'm stunned with both of you. The immersive universe was nothing short of a five out of five stars for me because that's all this episode was. He had three Obi Wans in one moment. Hello there, and like it was just jokes for days about things that had come before and yeah. things that fans had thought. And oh, it's like this was it pulled in stuff from outside of the lore itself, as we just said for the fandom, and made that a part of the story. And so I think that's what makes this special, as they were just really honed in on what. And heard what people thought of it, and knew really a lot about the story. So that's that. And those jokes. That's what took this thing to another level. You got a good feeling about Duel of the Ranks? Then punch it down below to subscribe so that you never miss our latest ranks and hot takes from a galaxy far, far away. This is the way to some of the best Star Wars content out there. So do or do not. There is no try. But do yourself a favor and do it.